Hello guys, happy happy new year, happy 2022 and welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Bumila Dwaba, aka Mrs. Mom. If you've been on the channel, you know. And yeah guys, we are back on the tube. Um, the tube, I don't know where I got that from. Um, however, I feel like I can still say happy new year until my birthday. After the 23rd of January, guys, we can officially stop saying happy new year. But I'm so excited to be back. It always feels great to be here because I know you guys are so highly engaged. Um, this year, the goal is to reach 500,000 subscribers. I mean, it's a reach and a half, but hey, crazy faith. If you guys are part of wisdom and wellness community, you know we are reading crazy faith. And you know what, the goal is to grow make more impact and reach more nations and I know with your guys support we can definitely reach there so if you haven't yet sent to your friends and your family make sure you send some videos I mean not everything will always relate to everyone but I do believe there's a little something for everyone please don't forget to subscribe like the video and definitely make sure you share this year I do plan on focusing a whole lot on YouTube I definitely think it's the year of YouTube I don't know why but something tells me the plan platform is about to grow 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 so if you've been waiting to start that youtube channel this is your sign to start it now um you know jump on that train it's a growing one i was reading um in destiny magazine about where youtube is youtube is going and the impact it's have it's, it's having on just the world as a whole and how we present content and entertainment and information so jump on that wagon i will be focusing a whole lot um i think as usual we'll figure out what works um before I used to have a rigid um, type style of saying, okay, this is the content I'm doing this year. But you know what? I think it's important to diversify as long as for me, it's meaningful and impactful and brings in a little bit of fun, but also still uh, making sure that it's a safe uh, community. So today's first video, I can't believe it feels like it was just yesterday when I did um, the first video of 2021 and it was return to God. And now we're here, we're doing the first video of 2022. And this one is titled build your church. There's a song by Elevation inspired by the book of Matthew um, when Jesus was speaking to Peter about building the church. And it sings on, it's one of the most beautiful songs that I listened to, but I didn't pay a lot of it. It wasn't like my favorite on the album. I loved it, but it wasn't like one that I played all the time. And towards the end of the year from about you know, October, November, I naturally, I start honing in and start listening in. Guti, what is God saying about the new year? What is the vision for, for the new year, for, 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 for specifically for my life? And I think in, also we are with Elevation Church and around Thanksgiving, we get the word for the new year and their word is better. And like I mentioned in my previous podcast, then we bring in our word as a family. And it's so far, it's always aligned with what the church um, is saying. And yeah, you know, with these things, um, I always say don't overthink things, but just avail yourself, have that quiet time, build that intimacy, build that intimacy with God. And trust me, you'll start hearing what he has to say for your life. It's important to be part of church, to be part of a community and um, to have a pastor and some leaders and to watch um, preaching. But more importantly is that you have your own personal relationship with God so that you can get your personal um, revelation. Um, that's very, very important. When I heard God say these words, uh, I said, okay, God, what are we doing? What are we building? The church? And not so much. Personally, for me, this revelation is not so much. Building the church is not building a physical building, but the people of God. The people of Christ are actually the church. So that is something I want you to constantly remember as we go through the video that when I say build the church, when when I say God is building the church, we're not building a physical building, but it's about what God is doing in each of our individual lives so that we can all contribute towards the body of Christ. Okay, let's start with a Bible, some Bible reading. Um, this is a Bible that I read. 
The Everyday Life by Joyce Meyer. It's an amplified study Bible. I got mine at Kumbux. Um, they do sell out pretty fast, but any study Bible by Joyce Meyer is really amazing. I have quite a few, so don't fret over the exact same one, but a study Bible um, by Joyce Meyer is amazing. I also have her ba Battlefield of the Mind Bible. That is also great. I really love her. I enjoy her commentary, um, so that works out for me. New Living Translation is quite a great one. More affordable um, these study Bibles are quite expensive you don't have to get it so get a, an affordable Bible I know there's Bible apps they are great for referencing but there's just something about physically opening the Bible okay let me get into it as you guys can see I've got a lot to say we're gonna read in the book of Matthew 16 verse 13 and starting off when Jesus um, was asking his disciples and he said who do people say that the Son of Man is and they answered, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or just one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter replied, you are the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed, the son of the living God. Then Jesus answered him, blessed, happy, spiritually secure, favored by God are you, Simon, son of Jonah, because flesh and blood, mortal man, did not reveal this to you, but my father who is in heaven. Another version says divinity. And I say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades, death, will not overpower it by preventing the resurrection of Christ. Let me continue. I will give you the keys, authority of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind, forbid, declare to be improper and unlawful on earth, will have already been bound in heaven. And whatever you loose, permit, declare lawful on earth, will have already been loosed in heaven. Just a few pointers that I wanted to go through based on the on this passage of the whole um moment that happened with Jesus and his disciples as they were walking through and going through, um, Jesus said to them, who do people say that I am? Who do people say I am? And they gave their answers and they gave their answers. And it brings me to my first point. And Jesus said, okay, but who do you say that I am? First thing um, that I noted from the scripture is that Jesus understood that there was all these um, laws, religious people, people who knew the Bible extremely, extremely well, who followed religion, who knew the teachings, great and all, right? And like I said, when we started, the, the corporate side of church is great, coming together as a people, um, having church and all of that and hearing from pastors and our leaders. But ultimately, who do you say God is to you? Because for some people, God is this figure that is just up there and should just be worshipped and that's it, right? And you can only experience something or someone or divinity to the point of your own understanding. So for me, um, when I started out, when I first got saved, it was the same. I was very um, religious minded. Um, for me, God was all about following rules and if I break the rules, um, I have to ask for forgiveness or I'm going to hell. And that way of living was not free at all. And Jesus came so that we could be free. So I was living this religious life and ultimately I was very judgmental of other people because I couldn't even keep up with the standards I had set because I didn't see my father or God or Jesus as this loving figure who's there in every moment, but it was set for just Sunday. So Monday to Saturday, I'm basically just doing my own thing. And then Sunday, it's church time, time to put on my holy suit and time to speak a certain way. And that's the only time God is, is involved. And then life happens and you realize that actually I need Jesus every single day. And for me, and I've always spoken about my tattoo that's written grace. For me, I met Jesus as my savior, the one who gave me grace. And when I was in the pits, when I was, when life had just, thrown me a curveball and from viewing Christ that way and seeing him as loving, merciful, graceful, my relationship changed and my life ultimately changed. So who do you say Jesus is to you? To, and this can be personalized. It can be different and different in, diff in different seasons. Um, sometimes, some seasons, he's my soul, pro he's my provider. You know, whatever that provision looks like. Some seasons, he's, I just need a loving father. Sometimes I just need a friend and sometimes, Lord, I just need a superhero. I just need miracles. So 
ultimately what Jesus was saying is, who do you say that I am? You need a personal revelation of who Jesus is to you first. That is the fundamental of everything. I believe the foundation of even this building of the church, of building of us, is we first have to identify who God is to us. Because in identifying who God and who Jesus is to us, then we get to know a little bit more about who we are and the purpose that we have come to serve on earth. Number two, the building comes through divinity. Here Jesus says, blessed, happy, spiritually secure, favored by God are you, Simon, are, are you, Simon, son of Jonah, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. When it comes to the things of the spirit, when it comes to things of purpose, and even when it comes to the work of God, we cannot do it by our own works. We cannot do it by our own power. We cannot do it by our own discipline, our, our self-awareness. We cannot do it with our own will. Yes, there's certain principles that, there's principles that, ex, that, that require us to obviously do our part, but the revelation comes from God. Peter did not think for himself or figure it out or obey himself into understanding who Jesus was. As Jesus says, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but divinity, your father in heaven. So in building the church of God, yes, we want to do all these things. Um, I mean, we know the story of Martha and Mary, and sometimes we want to just do, do, do things for God, go to church four times a week, um, sing in the choir, pray seven times. But in the doing, do you hear the Holy Spirit revealing things? Because sometimes we think it's a time of fasting and it's really not. God, we have to listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying in that moment. Sometimes you think to get that new job, you have to pray seven times a day. Or God could just be saying, hey, write the CV and send it, you know. So it's so important. And this sounds like very silly little things, but that's how much I want us to connect um, our spiritual lives or Christ to our everyday little things. We need to be connected to divinity and the Holy Spirit within us. I always talk about Holy Spirit as some, someone has asked me, why do I not say the Holy Spirit or Holy Spirit? So it's not necessarily a, a theological explanation for me, but I have connected connected the Holy Spirit as someone living inside of me, Christ in, in spirit, living inside of me, helping me make decisions. And that voice actually sounds like my own voice inside. So people always ask, how do you know it's God speaking? It's never with a, boom, it's time to do this. But it's always that little voice, that gut, that intuition that says to you, don't go there there's danger or do this. Um, and that for me is the Holy Spirit. And the thing with the Holy Spirit or Holy Spirit, the more you listen, the more you hear, the more you ignore, the more you stop hearing. So hear me correctly. Holy Spirit does not stop talking, does not stop guiding, does not stop loving, does not stop leading. We just stop hearing. But if we are still enough, if we take some time, if we commune, if we communicate and build that relationship with God, we hear. And so Jesus is so happy here for Peter and he says to him, um, you, are, you, you are spiritually secure, you're favored by God because flesh didn't reveal this to you. Your works didn't do this for you. Your, 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 your commitment, none of it. It's the Holy Spirit that has revealed it to you. So in building the church, in building the church through you, it looks different to what God is doing for me. So for me, God might be pruning my character, teaching me on self-acceptance, teaching me on self-love. And for you, God could be teaching you on discipline. Um, there's two worlds, and Brendan and I had discussed this, that even in the beginning of the year, some things had happened. And I said, you know what? In, even in, I already feel the building of, 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 of the church in me because normally I do things a certain way, but God has allowed certain things to happen so I can, I can build from a place of self-love where I learn to accept God's unconditional love. And for someone else, the spectrum is different. God can expect you to do certain things so that he can teach you some discipline and self-control. So it's different. Ultimately, what is important is that you hear from Holy Spirit that you are connected and that you receive your personal revelation. And number three, Christ builds through us. 
if God is going to do some work on earth, he's going to need people to do it. He's not going to send angels down here. But as long as we have breath in our lungs and our heart is still pumping, we have work to do and God is doing it through us. That's why even as Jesus departed or as Jesus left, he said, I don't leave you alone. I leave you with the Holy Spirit so you can do far more than what I've done. So if you think and you read, I've been studying the book of um, Luke and all, and it's, it basically tells the story of Jesus. And you think of all the things he has done. And before he leaves, he tells us that you're going to do far more because you've got the Holy Spirit empowering you. Can you imagine what God wants to do through us? But God cannot work on a shady foundation. He needs the foundation to be solid. And that's why he says, I am building my church. Now let's get into some pointers that I have written down number one god works with order we always hear that god is a god of order and i certainly believe it and it's proof in, it's it's proved in everything i mean think about our bodies um have you ever had a stomach ache or actually let me even think about it as breaking your like just bumping your toe by the by the corner of a desk you know how painful that is and how it affects your whole day that's how orderly god is that everything flows in such a way that your toe is affected by your brain your brain is affected by your eye your eye is affected by everything works in order and is systematic if something is not orderly in the body that's when sickness comes in that's when disease um comes in so that's how we need to think of God and the body of Christ. If God does not work on our character, then we come in and we bring some disease into the world. If God doesn't work on, on our hearts, then when we speak about this loving God, then we go and instead of doing a good work and spreading the good news, we hurt people. So it's important that God works on our hearts and he does so orderly sometimes we wonder god why aren't you doing this yet you promised me this but god is a god of order and unfortunately or fortunately i always say god cannot work outside your will so i always make this example your purpose is right here and it's up to you how soon you get there and how you get there the purpose doesn't change he doesn't take away the gifts but it's up to you are you obedient are you allowing him to do a good work in you so that when you are ready you can go to your promise or you can go to your purpose or you can receive that answered prayer receive that miracle but to God it's more important that your character sustains you it's more important that your lovingness comes out that you don't destroy people on the way but rather you show love and you show compassion so God is a God of order and as he's building his church he needs to start with the he needs to start with the foundation, the foundations of our hearts, the foundations of our character, our personality and everything else. He works in stages. So for some of us, he's starting with our hearts. For some of us, he's starting with our, he's, start, he's continuing with our habits. For some of us, he's taking us to greater heights, but he cannot just take you from nowhere to greater heights. You have to follow the natural order of things. I mean, I always think of Jesus, even Jesus, he could have just, arrived on earth as a grown man but God is a God of order he came as a baby and he went to the synagogues and he learned of the teachings and he lived life he did things then at the age of 30 his ministry started so God could have done so that he just got you on earth and his ministry started. But God works in order. And that's one thing he's constant in. Even with time, time regulates us. I mean, time, the sun, the moon, no matter how poor, how rich, how happy, how unhappy, how saved or unsaved you are, we will all get the same time. We will all get the same sun. We will all get the same moon because that is God. He's constant and he works with order. Number two, character before platform i just want to touch on it and emphasize it again that even as jesus was picking out his disciples the people he would walk with he he was not looking for for perfect people people who are already doing this thing and killing it but he was looking for people who are busy doing um some were fishermen some were carpenters some were tax collectors and then he took them along a, along the journey and before he could empower them with the holy spirit and say okay go out there he walked with them he showed them by the time jesus died they had built some character they had learned some lessons they were ready to be launched out into their ministries so what is your ministry Remember, remember, ministry is not a microphone. It's not a church. Your ministry could be your children, your family, your marriage, the business you're supposed to start, that YouTube channel you're supposed to start, 
But God has to build your character so that along the way you don't destroy his people. You don't kill his people. You don't kill them with selfishness, with, with judgment, with hatred. But along the way, your ministry is supposed to speak the good news of Christ. When people see your life, they should be inspired to serve your master and to serve God. So even Jesus, like I mentioned, he was a child. He lived like a child. He went to the teachings. He received the teachings. Then his ministry was launched. And number three, there has to be evidence of his presence. What is the evidence of his presence? When God is building the church, let me recap. Number one, he's going to work with order. Number two, he's going to build your character before he, build, he, he launches you on a platform. And number three, there has to be evidence of his presence. Um, and this is not just in material things, but it has to start inward and then everything else will flow. I believe God has, he owns the world. He owns the universe. He created everything. And he said it is ours because we are his children. But before he can give all of that to us, he wants to start with the inner work because what does it help if we have all the great things, but we can't receive it because our hearts are closed off. How do you know the evidence of the... Of his presence, it's simply the fruits of this, the fruits of the spirit, which is found in the book of Galatians chapter five. And here's the fruit of the spirit, and it's like I said, it's the result of his presence within us. How do you know God is within someone, or Jesus is within someone, or the building is happening of the church within you? Number one, love, unselfish concern for others. Number two, joy. Not joy, not happiness because something great is happening, but that inner joy where you're just grateful to be alive. You're grateful to be loved by God. And no matter what, you know that God is for you. Number three, peace. Peace that surpasses understanding. Things could be going all wrong, but you have peace. Just like Jesus on the boat, he just laid there as the storms were going. He had peace because he knew the power that he had inside him. So we need to recognize that the, the same power Jesus had when he commanded the storm is the same power that he left us with, the Holy Spirit within us. We just have to listen. We just have to trust and we just have to believe. Number four, kindness. How do we treat people? Are we polite or are we kind or do we choose who we want to be kind to? Goodness, faithfulness. This is a big one. Are you faithful with the little that you've been given? I mean, I've watched so, it's, I always, I'm such an observer and you watch people saying, I want to do this, I want to do this. Okay, but did you finish the last thing you started? Because if you're just hopping and hopping and changing, that shows that you're not faithful. How can you be trusted with more if you upload on your YouTube channel once every six months? Or even at work, you use the work phone to do your own thing. You steal the stationery at work. Um, we even go as far as if we're stopped by traffic cops, we would rather get our tickets or go to jail than to bribe. Because that's how it, when God seeps through you, when he starts living in you every day, you just cannot compromise your character. You cannot compromise your integrity, your faithfulness. Faithfulness is not just how faithful you tithe, how faithful you are in church attendance, but in every day when no one's looking, are you faithful? Gentleness and self-control. This one for me is quite a big one, which I think God dealt with me for a long time. You have to have self-control. How can I trust you with my nations if I can't trust you with the way you talk to your children? You want to be a speaker to nations, but the way you talk to your children is not okay. Self-control. How can I trust that I can take you all over the world, but you don't take care of the body that I need to use in order to fulfill my assignment. There's a place for all these things, but this is the result of his presence within us. And I wrote here, building can be messy and we've done re renovations and it's so messy, but it's so messy, especially the foundation. And as far as I know, the foundation is the most important, the one that takes the longest. This is where the digging happens. This is where the cleaning happens. This is where the structural changes happen, where the order happens, and it takes extremely long, and it's not nice. So when I say build your church, I know it's exciting to say, whoa, God is building the church. But also, I want you to be aware that it's not always sunshine. The building can be hard. The pro it's, it, it, it's, it's not nice to be cleaned out. It's not nice for, for God to uproot certain things. It's not, God, it's not nice for God to change certain habits, but it's important. It's important because a firm foundation 
foundation can withstand anything. Once the foundation is done, then the beautiful house is erected. But what does it help if it's a beautiful house with beautiful windows, but as soon as something happens, it's all wiped off and because of a shaky foundation. But if you have a firm foundation, it stands. It stands through everything. And that is what God wants to do as he builds his church. He wants to start with the foundation, the foundation of our hearts, the foundation of our character, the foundation of our habits. You're gonna go as far as your habits. God cannot work outside your will. God cannot work outside your self-control. God cannot work outside your willingness to be obedient. Oh, I didn't mention one fruit of the spirit, which was patience. Sorry, but I'll bring it in because I just thought about it now. Patience, it's how we act while we're waiting. And I was just thinking about this, that ultimately we all have to wait, right? Um, that's, not, that, that's not even an option. If you're sitting in traffic, you have to wait. If you apply for a job, you have to wait. Nobody asks you. It doesn't matter what you have or who you are in the world. At some point, we have to wait. But what patience is, is how we act while we are waiting waiting and that is why i think it's one of the most important principles that god teaches us being patient how we are while we're waiting for that promise waiting for that job waiting for all the wonderful things god has promised us don't just rush to, through life and like i always say be fully present be grateful in every moment and ask god what are you trying to teach me right now and that's my word. Um, that's my first video for 2022. Um, God is building the church and the church is you and I. And the evidence of God's building is found in Galatians 5 verse, I think, I believe verse 25. Um, and it's the evidence of his presence. It's the fruit of the spirit. Um, and just to recap, number one, God works with order. Number two, he does, he deals with our character before platform. And number three, there has to be evidence of his presence. The foundation, the building is messy. But man, when that house is built, when that house, when you are launched out, it will be so worth it. And those seasons of building will carry you. Thank you so much. Comment down below what you heard, how you're feeling, what you're doing this year, and definitely subscribe. I love you, love you so much. God bless you. Oh, 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 oh,